our scripture lesson this morning is the story of Epiphany, the story of the three wise men. I invite you to hear it anew this morning. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing unto you. For you, O God, are this community's rock and redeemer. Amen. A part of our Advent and Christmas celebration in our home is that instead of a you know, mischievous little elf that moves around the house creating um, little scenes of disaster... Instead of a little elf that moves around our house, we have a star that moves around our house each day during the Advent season. Every morning, the star is moved to a new location, and when Eleanor wakes up, one of the first things that she'll do is search the house to find the star. As soon as she finds the star, she has to go and get the three wise men and she brings her three wise men and places them beside the star. So throughout the Advent season, the star of Christ moves around our house and the three faithful disciples follow, or three faithful wise men follow along behind it and bless their hearts. These three wise men have followed that star to the top of picture frames, to the bottom of windows, um, to closets, to cabinets, and even to bathroom shelves. All, all until Christmas morning, when on this day the star is moved to the top of the nativity scene in Eleanor's bedroom, signaling the birth, the arrival of Jesus Christ. This little practice, it's, a great, it's become a great teaching tool for me and Nathan to, to talk about the Christmas story, especially when we actually remember to move the star. <laughs> But it's become a good practice that reminds all of our family of the journey of the wise men and the movement of the star. I love the epiphany story. These wise men followed this new star in the sky, knowing that this star would lead them to something amazing, to someone amazing. They knew that this new star in the sky would lead them to the one who is to become, who is the king of the Jews, the king, the savior of the world, the Messiah. They, they knew this because they were, they were astrologers. They were men who were skilled in the study of stars. And also they were, they, were, they were professionals in the field of natural sciences. And back in their time, they weren't the only ones who would look to the sky for ultimate meaning or for signs or messages. It was a common belief. That, that the night sky was a canvas upon which God would, would write to the world. It was also believed that the star under which a person was born had something to say about that person's destiny. So there was something very special about this star. And the wise men followed it until they met the newborn king. 
We read that as they met Jesus, when the star finally stopped moving, they were overwhelmed with joy. Now you could read it that they were overwhelmed that their journey was over. I read it that they were overwhelmed with joy because of the hope, the hope of the one whom they would soon see. They met Jesus and these, these wise men's lives were changed. As they experienced this overwhelming joy, they met the baby Jesus and, and these, these professional men, these skilled studiers of the star, they became giddy, you might even say foolish, as they saw this baby as they met Jesus Christ and they just, they opened up their treasure chest and presented to him their gifts. And they, they left that day different people. They left different men, different, different from the ones, or different from how they had arrived. For they left knowing that the world would never be the same, that their lives would never be the same because of the child they met that day. They left with an, with an unknown joy and they left with as new people. As we, as we start a new year, as we enter into 2020, how many of us long to be like the wise men? How many of us long to experience an unknown joy? How many of us long to be made new. How many of us long to enter into 2020 differently than we did 2019? Many of us have taken the opportunity that a new year provides to set some goals, to make some New Year's resolutions, to maybe experience this new joy or to experience newness in our lives. These resolutions and these goals abound. I love the, I love the, the new start that a new year gives and I love the idea of New Year's resolutions. Sometimes I even make them. Usually I just cheer on other people as they make them and try to stick with them. But I love the new opportunity that a new year poses because I remember all of my years um, in education. I remember my, my career um, in even as young as elementary school and junior high and high school and college and seminary. Every year I would have teachers or professors who would remind the whole class on the first day of class that at that point we all had A's. No matter how the last year ended, no matter how we ended the semester before, with the start of the new semester, we all had A's. We all had the opportunity for a fresh start, for a new beginning. A new year gives us that same kind of hope. You don't like the way you felt in 2019? Embrace something new in 2020. Relationships were kind of crummy in 2019. Invest in them in 2020. Not wanting to have a repeat of 2019? Embrace the fresh start of 2020. This, all, all this talk of new year and the new hope and these new year's resolutions and hoping to be new in 2020 this isn't foreign language for us in the church. As a matter of fact, us in the, we in the church, we're well-versed in language of newness. We regularly talk about praying, praying and working toward the new things that God is doing. Scripture is, is filled with examples, these reminders, of these words of comfort and challenge of all the new things that God is doing in our midst. In Revelation, we read, For behold, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The prophet Isaiah, speaking for God, reminded us, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Also in Revelation, John was given the vision, and 
he saw the one who sat upon the throne and said, Behold, I make all things new. And of course, we can't forget Paul's words. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? New creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. That's, that's a shared language for us as Christians. The hope in the new, in new creation of being made new. But if we're really honest, which I'm sure we all really want to be, if we're really honest with ourselves, how many of us actually want to be new? A lot of our New Year's resolutions are resolutions like better health, lower blood pressure, lower cholesterol, lower weight, greater productivity, a cleaner house. These resolutions actually aren't so much about creating a new person, but rather about improving ourselves. These res resolutions reveal that even our hopes for the new year are often limited to just better versions of who we already are. Just optimized versions of the life we already know. But coming back to the wise men, when the wise men had their life-changing encounter with Christ, they left filled with that new joy. But they also left with a warning that they received in a dream, a warning of dangers which faced them with this new joy and new life that they had. And so they went home by another way. St. Augustine, an early, an early church father who wrote in the 4th and, fifth century, 4th and 5th century, he wrote so long ago this great quote that I came across this week. The Magi didn't return home by the same route they arrived on. Learn from the past. If you want to change your life, then change your way. The Magi didn't return home on the same route they had arrived on. They learned from their past and then they changed their way leading into the future. The new year does offer us the chance to embrace the new. It offers us the chance for the fresh start, for a new beginning, to, li to, to live into the new creation that God is making in each one of us and into our world. But this requires deep change. It requires us, like the wise men, to move forward in a different way, to learn from our past and to not enter into the new year in the same ways we entered into the previous year. This is deeper than any diet plan or exercise regimen or even house cleaning schedule as great as those are and needed as they may be. So what does this kind of change look like entering into a new year? I've been really um, challenged by several of my friends on social media and even I've heard some from, some from some of our folks within our congregation of a practice that they have at the beginning of a new year. And that practice is, at the beginning of the year, they adopt a new word for their life. This word that they'll adopt, it will be their, the word that guides them in all the areas of their life. They've chosen words like joy, gratitude, and thanksgiving, and even words like savor, and relish, and balance. I love this practice because this word is something we can carry with us each day and it's an attitude, a new way that can be filtered into all the areas of our lives. But if we want to enter into a new year with new ways, I also challenge each one of you, each one of us to commit to practices that will bring about newness 
practices that will bring about a new way of life. I challenge you to commit, this probably sounds like I'm preaching to the choir, to commit to being in worship every Sunday unless you're sick or out of town, knowing that this is the place where the risen Lord promises to be, that it's in worship that the Lord promises to be with us and to be made known among us. Commit to praying more, not only taking your desires to God, but praying more so that you may enter into a conversation with God, sharing your deepest hopes, your deepest fears, and then creating a space to listen to God and to hear words of comfort and even words of challenge and calls that God has for you. Commit to serving in an act of mission, not because of any notoriety that you'll receive or because of how good it's gonna make you feel, but the bonus is it will make you feel really good. Commit to, to an act of service or an act of mission knowing that that action gives you the opportunity to shine the light of Christ into someone else's life and that your act of compassion has the opportunity to change someone else's life in the name of Jesus Christ. Commit to participating in a small group or a Bible study, knowing that those are the environments, those are the groups in which we grow deeper in our relationship with God as we develop a deeper understanding of who God is and what God is saying to us through God's word and through one another. The wise men left that day as new people full of this new joy, but they didn't go home by the same route they used to arrive. They went home by a new way. May it be so for us. May we enter into 2020 by a new way, by new ways of life. May we embrace the hope that we have in Jesus Christ to have a new start and to be made new. Amen.